Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, we have a packed house today, and I'm going to, uh, before we get started, we were in a closed session, and before we get started this meeting, uh, we need to come out of that closed session, so our Vice Chair, Mr. Brown, will do the honors. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Whereas the School Board of the City of Newport News has convened a closed meeting on this date pursuant to an affirmative recorded vote and in accordance with the provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act, and whereas Section 2.2-3712D of the Code of Virginia requires a certification by this school board that such a closed meeting was conducted in conformity with Virginia law, now therefore be it resolved that Newport News School Board hereby certifies that to the best of each member's knowledge, one, only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements by Virginia law were discussed in the closed meeting to which this certification applies, and two, only such public business matters as were identified in the motion convening the closed meeting were heard, discussed, or considered. You hear the motion, there's a second? Second. You heard the motion and you heard the second. Time for the question. There being none, Ms. Buffalo, please call the roll. Mr. Harris. I'm sorry, Mr. Hunter. Four. Ms. Simons. Four. Mrs. Sewell Small. Four. Mr. Brown. Four. Mr. Brown. Four. Mr. Four. Four. Mr. Four. Thank you. So at this time, I would like to call to order our regular monthly meeting of the Newport News School Board for Tuesday, May 21st. 2019 on behalf of the members of the school board and our superintendent i welcome each of you present and watching our quorum is present to transact the business of the school division we will begin our meeting today as usual with the invocation pledge to the flag here to do the honors are two students from kim creek elementary school zoe samuels and connor strickland first connor will come up and uh, deliver the invocation and followed uh, then zoe will follow him so, Connor, before uh, you start, come up. Tell us a little bit about yourself before you get started. I go to Pound Creek Elementary School. I am Connor Strickland, and my favorite subject is math. All right. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the title of my poem is You Can. If you think you are beaten, you are. If you think you do not, you don't. If you like to win, but you think you can't, and so much they sense you won't. If you like to lose, you are lost, for out in the world you'll find success begins with fellows. Fellows will not. It's all in a state of mind. If you think you are a class, you are. If you got to think high to your eyes, you've got to be sure of yourself before you can ever win the prize. Life battles don't always go to the stronger, to the stronger or faster man, but sooner or later, the one who wins is the one who thinks he can. not that was outstanding. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we'll have uh, Miss Zoe. Will you please come forward and tell us a little bit about yourself? My name is Zoe Samuels. I go to Kiln Creek Elementary School. My favorite subject is reading and writing. Today, I will be doing the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Ms. Zoe, thank you very much. And uh, Mr. Connor, let's give them both a round of applause. Uh, supporting, supporting Zoe and Connor tonight, uh, or is their family and their school family, could they please stay in to be recognized? Uh, uh, the board appreciates you bringing them, out, bringing them here to this meeting tonight. And again, uh, they did a fine job. Again, let's give them one more round of applause. Okay. Well, since we got a full house, I think we'll move the agenda. And uh, next we'll have our board recognitions. I believe that's why so many folks are in the house this evening. Uh, Dr. Parker, would you join me up front? Yes, yes. On behalf of the school board and the superintendent, I'm pleased to present this month's recognitions. Ensuring that young people are financially literate 
is crucial to prepare them for future financial success. Our first honorees this evening are performing well in this area. Working in Support of Education, or WISE, is an educational organization dedicated to building financial literacy, fostering business and social entrepreneurship, and preparing students for college and the global workplace. The organization's Literacy Certification Program provides high school students with financial education and the opportunity to become certified financially literate. Students learn more about personal finance, then they take the Y Standardized Financial Literacy Test, a nationally recognized certification. This evening, we are pleased to share that an Achievable Dream High School was named among the 2019 Best Wise High Schools Teaching Personal Finance. Accepting this recognition on behalf of the Achievable Dream family, our career and technical education teacher, Stephanie Sadler. Would you please come forward? Ms. Sadler, no, you're okay. Uh, Assistant Principal Ramona Palmer and Principal Marilyn Sinclair White. WISE announced its 2019 ranking of the 100 best WISE high schools teaching personal finance during a ceremony at the New York Stock Exchange last month. This is the only national ranking that recognizes excellence in personal finance instruction among WISE's national network of schools. The 100 best ranking is determined based on the average certification test score with special consideration given to the number of student takers and the background of the students. Educators, thank you for equipping our students with the tools they need to become college, career, and citizen ready. Again, congratulations. Joining um, these educators this evening is our CTE instructional specialist, Christy Hopkins. Thank you. The Virginia School Board Association's Business Honor Roll provides local school districts the opportunity to nominate and recognize up to three local businesses for their support of public schools and its students. With the number of outstanding business partners helping our students in Newport News, it's hard to narrow the list down to just three. So in order to select the 2019 business role nominees, we looked at businesses that have distinguished themselves in an extra special way this year or over the course of several years. The Newport News School Board nominated three local partners to the business honor roll to acknowledge and thank them for their support and service to the school district and the students we serve. Two of our business partners are present this evening. Named to the VSBA Honor Roll are Newport News Shipbuilding and PepsiCo and Riverside Health Systems, which we will acknowledge next month. <laughs> the employees and management of Newport News Shipbuilding have a long history of supporting our students, teachers, and schools. Their many ongoing programs have helped shape the career and college plans for students across the city. The long-standing tattoo program, taking action to overcome obstacles, and the more recent GEMS, which stands for Girls with Engineering Minds in Shipbuilding, are but two more of the many initiatives that provide outstanding services to our students. The shipyard even has a department dedicated to career education for students, known as SEEK, Shipbuilders Engaging in Educating Kids. The team members are a constant presence in our classroom. 
with us tonight to accept um, the business honor roll plaque on behalf of Newport News Shipbuilding are members in no particular order who are instrumental in helping our students. Tom Cosgrove, Chantil Foster, Gary Atterbridge, Khalid Stevenson, and Tommy Craig. Did I, miss one? Did I get everybody? as they make their way back, I'd also like to share that Newport News Shipbuilding also serves on the Heritage Governor's STEM Academy Advisory Committee and the Newport News Education Foundation. The shipyard recently awarded a $50,000 grant to a partnership of Newport News Public Schools, the Newport News Education Foundation, and the Peninsula Chapter or the Peninsula Chamber of Commerce to develop a skills trade program that will enable students to earn industry certifications in welding and complete a workforce leadership course by the time they graduate from high school. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again. Another important school district partner named to the business honor roll is PepsiCo. Whenever called on to assist with a classroom project or a division-wide event, PepsiCo employees are always willing to help. PepsiCo has joined with Newport News Public Schools to share their time and talent as an engineering design challenge partner in a program where middle and high school students work within a simulated environment to experience what it's like to work at a local STEM company. During the PepsiCo Challenge, 52 students assumed the role of industrial engineers and worked to solve the problem that PepsiCo employees might encounter on the job. Joining us tonight to accept the Business Honor Roll plaque on behalf of PepsiCo are Todd Thomas, Pepsi, uh, Pepsi Newport News Plant Director. Mr. Thomas. And Lauren Bailey, Process Improvement Engineer. PepsiCo is also a longtime dedicated school district partner. Company leaders serve on the Heritage Governor STEM Advisory Board and are always ready to host student tours of their bottling plant, along with providing job shouting opportunities for graduating seniors. Their employees serve as speakers at middle school career days, and the company donates materials for Spark and throughout the year for classroom STEM activities. Thank you, and again, congratulations for your support of Newport News Public Schools. You're going to get a picture. The skills of our next honorees were put to the test recently at the State Skills USA Championships. Skills USA is a national organization of high school and college students enrolled in training programs in technical, skilled, and service occupations. Last month, hundreds of students from across the state gathered in Virginia Beach for the State Skills Leadership Conference and Skills Championships. This evening, we're proud to recognize three students in the telecommunications program who earned first place in the OSHA Rules, Regulations, and Procedures competition. Please join me in congratulating Gerald Bailey, a junior at Warwick High School. <laughs> Seth Hersey, a junior at Woodside. and Michael McClellan, a junior at Woodside. Thanks. 
All three of these young men are in their first year of the TV production program. This team created an Occupational Safety and Health Administration rules scrapbook to display their research in, video production, in the video production occupational area. They also created a video as one of their projects for the competition, which answered questions about safety rules and precautions with the television production truck. The competition also included an interview by a panel of judges. This team is now advancing to the National Skills USA competition, which will be held um, in where are we headed to? Louisville, Kentucky. It used to be in Missouri. At this time, we want congratulations. And before you take your picture, I'd like to acknowledge um, any family members and friends who are here to join you tonight. Do you have any? Okay. I know I saw, there we go. I was gonna say. I saw your principals, that was Dr. Kelly Mason at Warwick High School and Dr. Wendy uh, Nichols at Woodside High School, um, the telecommunications instructor, Mr. Carl Daniels, and the supervisor, Ray Price, the sponsor of Skills USA. Thank you and congratulations. And bring it back next month. Take your picture. <laughs> The Governor's Transportation Safety Awards recognize individuals or organizations that have made significant contributions to transportation safety in Virginia. The program is sponsored by the Virginia Board of Transportation Safety. This year, the Heritage High School Chapter of Students Against Destructive Decisions, or SAD, earned a 2019 Governor's Transportation Safety Award in the Community Impact category. This category recognizes organizations for enhancing diversity and inclusion efforts that impact communities and improve highway safety related behaviors. Please join me in congratulating several members of the Heritage SAD Club. Nehemiah Carter. <laughs> Trevon Faison. Antonio Martin, Emmanuel McNeil, Faith Morris, and Darius Price. The Heritage SAD Club has been very busy this year. They've hosted and provided numerous programs and projects to promote transportation safety. They've promoted seatbelt usage and shared the effects of drinking and driving, distracted driving, and how marijuana can impact driving. Not that any of them are doing that. Other habits and other habits that can be harmful. Earlier this year, Herit the Heritage SAD Club won a John T. Hanna Award for traffic safety in the category of pupil traffic safety, and the committee nominated the organization for the governor's award. This team, or members of this team, will be honored at a special ceremony tomorrow, so they've got a little trip ahead of them as well. Joining them this evening is their sponsor, Jamie Plecker. Would you please stand? <laughs> and their principal, their proud principal of the 5800 family, Shamika Gerald. <laughs> and do you have any family members joining you this evening? Okay, no, y'all, okay. They're watching at home on TV. Okay, thank you for joining us, and we'd like for you to take a picture up front too.
Our next honoree was named a state champ in forensics. At the annual Virginia High School League State Forensics Meet held in March, he captured the top award in extemporaneous speaking. Those participating in extemporaneous speaking are provided 30 minutes of preparation time during which they have to prepare a seven minute speech. When preparation starts, speakers are offered three questions to answer and the questions are usually based on current affairs. Our next honoree performed well, earning or state recognition. Please congratulate our state champ, Warwick Senior John Nick. John, please come forward. John participated in two preliminary rounds before capturing the final championship in Group 5A. He was one of a handful of competitors in extemporaneous speaking. During the state tournament rounds, he had to speak on three topics, U.S. tax policy, Latin American relations, and the U.S. Supreme Court. And of course, he did so successfully. Okay. John, again, congratulations <laughs> on this well-deserved honor. I'm going to ask you to take a picture, but while John is getting set up here, I'd like to also acknowledge, um, I know he has a family member joining him. Would you please stand and be recognized? And also his principal, uh, Dr. Kelly Mason. Newport News Public Schools, many often hear, smart is something you become. Tonight, we're also recognizing 24 dedicated educators who took that to heart and have earned a master's degree in reading from the University of Virginia. This cohort has successfully completed a rigorous course of study, and it's been a three-year journey of reading, learning, practicing, and refining. Please join me in congratulating Delshima Bonner. Ms. Bonner. <laughs> Jennifer Brown. <laughs> Keldy Chewing. <laughs> Andrea Claxton. Jamie Cook, <laughs> Cynthia D. <De> Rowan, <laughs> Diana Furman, <laughs> Nyshea Gibson. Katie Hole, <laughs> Dina Janowski, <laughs> Rebecca Loftus, <laughs> Sandra Macklin. Lisa Mason, Jaron Maynard, Wendy Mohalko, Margie Merston, Holly Northrup, <laughs> Melanie Polker, Grace Rivera, Monica Spry.
Christine Steigelman. Heather Trueblood. <laughs> Mandy Villarreal. And Michelle Young. The graduates of the master's degree program in reading that you see before you are certified to teach the spectrum of readers pre-K through 12th grade. They will now serve as reading models and leaders for the educators across the school division. Joining them this evening is their support team. As I mentioned earlier, this was like a three year long process. Um, so joining them this evening are members of their family and their school families, um, and also the coordinator of this program, Angela Rett, our program administrator of development and expertise. Would you all please stand and be recognized? And their administrators as well. Thank you. Congratulations again. We're looking forward to great things from all of you. Thank you so much. Now, before you leave, we're going to take a picture. I'm not sure how this is going to work out. But I'm going to get out of the way. How about that? Behind this, and we are going to try to scoot over again. I'm on it. I'll sneak over. Congratulations to all of tonight's honorees. Oh, I'm hearing girl power over here. Lady power, okay. <laughs> At this time, we're gonna take an eight minute break so that our honorees and our guests may um, leave. If you choose to do so, you're welcome to stay. During this time, our viewing audience will have an opportunity to view this month's school board spotlight. So we'll stand in recess for about eight minutes. Thank you. The month of April is recognized as National Child Abuse Prevention Month. As a visual sign of support, gardens full of blue pinwheels have sprouted up across Newport News, many in front of schools, churches, and businesses. As a symbol of the fun and whimsical nature of childhood, the pinwheel reminds everyone that all children deserve a safe, loving, and nurturing environment to support their growth and development. Newport News Public Schools supports a childhood free of abuse and full of love and support. At General Stanford Elementary, the Kindness Club led the school's efforts during Youth Violence Prevention Week. Located on Fort Eustis, General Stanford invited the U.S. Army Family Advocacy Program to talk to kindergarten through second graders about the significance of the pinwheels. 
The students then paraded to the front of the school to plant their own silent garden with 340 pinwheels, giving children a voice against abuse. At Denby Early Childhood Center, city leaders joined our youngest students as they planted a silent garden along Warwick Boulevard. Throughout the day, classes took turns planting almost 400 pinwheels, with Newport News police officers lending a helping hand to the worthy cause. During the month of February, Nelson Elementary's Leadership Club advertised and sold CareGrams to raise money for their own silent garden. Nelson students also researched facts about child abuse and were invited to the city's 10th annual Silent Children's Garden Ceremony to share some of the heartbreaking statistics. Organized by the Blue Ribbon Committee, the ceremony began with the presentation of colors by Menchville High School's Air Force JROTC cadets. Superintendent of Schools, Dr. George Parker, presented the keynote message to the audience of students, families, elected officials, and community partners. Dr. Parker spoke about the importance of our children enjoying a stress-free family environment, not growing up too fast, and how our community can partner together to support a safe childhood for all children in Newport News. Students fully realize their academic potential when families and teachers work together. So the teaching staff at General Stanford Elementary ventured beyond the school walls to visit with students and families as the PALS and SOL testing dates crept closer. Organized by specialized instructor Tiffany Jones, General Stanford hosted a PALS and SOL neighborhood block party at a community park on the Fort Eustis base. The whole school was invited, with almost 200 students and family members joining in on the late afternoon gathering. Students were able to select and take home free books that were donated by General Stanford's teachers and staff. Cool treats and other gifts made the party complete. For the parents, this was a great opportunity to talk with teachers face to face about the upcoming tests while the knowledgeable teachers share tips and strategies for parents to support their students' success at home. General Stanford staff looks forward to future opportunities to meet with families off campus as they continue to build strong relationships and open beneficial lines of communication to fully support student achievement. When seniors graduate from an Achievable Dream middle and high school, it's not the end of the dream. Instead, the graduating class commits to a new dream as they venture into college, the military, or their chosen career and begin living life on their own. During Sponsors Day, financial supporters, service men and women, first responders, elected officials, and city, school, and community leaders were invited to a special lunch at the school. The honored guests were able to chat with third through fifth grade students from an Achievable Dream Academy while dining on a delicious meal kindly provided by Chick-fil-A's Kevin Harrison. After lunch, the class of 2019 participated in the third annual Commitment Ceremony. Wearing the shirts of their future colleges and universities, the graduating seniors signed their commitments to invest in their own future by showing up to class on time believing in themselves and remembering that an achievable dream loves them. The students also made updated versions of their dream mirrors that were started years ago in elementary school. The 53 seniors applied to over 300 institutions of higher learning and received an amazing 201 acceptance letters. And two students are jump-starting their careers by joining the Navy and the Newport News Police Department. Even though this commitment carries the students beyond the walls of an achievable dream, the knowledge, skills, and love that have been bestowed on these graduates will forever guide their dreams. Across the nation, childhood bullying plagues our schools. Newport News Public Schools has implemented a range of programs and works closely with community partners to ensure every student has a safe and nurturing environment to learn in. Time and again, the most important method for creating a positive school culture is when students, parents, families, 
and the community stand together to put an end to bullying and harassing behaviors. This collective partnership was on full display during a family forum on bullying hosted by the NNPS Youth Development Team at the Denby Community Center. Over 70 people attended the evening event, including students, parents, educators, community partners, city employees, bus drivers, and police officers. The purpose of the collaborative work session was to identify some of the challenges that hinder bullying prevention while developing an action plan to effectively address the most prevalent types of bullying in our schools. Virginia Center for Inclusive Communities has a long-standing partnership with Newport News Schools. VCIC regularly provides workshops and retreats for students and staff to build a community of leaders who work together in promoting inclusion, trust, and diversity. During the family forum, VCIC led a brainstorming session where attendees were able to work in small groups to voice their concerns, share ideas, and work towards practical solutions to decrease harassment and bullying in our schools. Moving forward, the youth development team is excited to implement some of the ideas shared at the Family Forum on Bullying to prevent harassment at our schools, on buses, and the growing threat of cyberbullying to create a safe and welcoming environment for all of our students. Uh, welcome back and hope you enjoyed our school board spotlight. Uh, before we move the agenda, uh, joining us this evening is school board representative to the school board for calendar year 2019-2020, uh, Nazir Gore. Nazir, would you please stand? <laughs> Nazir is currently a junior at Warwick High School and will begin his official term as a student representative on July 1. So we look forward to working with you. Um, you got big shoes to fill. That, <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Jones, we, we've been saying that every year. This is my fifth year on the board, and I can tell you every year um, we continue to step up the game. So you have like five pair of shoes to fill. You're number six. <laughs> and so, but we're looking forward to it. Um, you want to come to the mic and say anything real quick? We'll put you on the spot real quick. <laughs> It? No, you can just you can just speak okay. to it. Um, hello, my name is Isaiah Gore. I am currently a junior at Warwick High School. Um, throughout my life, I have always been like the um, the shy person in the classroom. And throughout um, kind of middle school and high school, I've had 
kind of principals and assistant principals, Mr. Ransom. Um, Dr. Mason just left, but she's been like a really good um, support system. But I've had those people that were always there to help me um, kind of develop as a student leader. And I've kind of, um, I know I have like so much to say, but um, <laughs> I don't want to take a lot of your time. So I will look forward to working with you guys. Uh, thank you very much. So we'll move the agenda at this time. I believe uh, during this part of our meeting, we provide the public the opportunity to address the board. These are scheduled at the early part of the agenda and then again uh, at the end of the agenda. Uh, the board considers this an opportunity to listen to your comments. Uh, please understand that we will consider your comments and get back with you at a later time. So as your name is called, please abide by our three minute limit. When you begin, the green light comes on, uh, the yellow light signals that you have 30 seconds, the red light and the beep, we are asking to, for you to uh, bring your comments to a close. And that being said, we do have cards here today. So first up, we have Ms. Lou Maynard. Hello, Ms. Lou. Good evening, um, school board members and Dr. Parker. Um, as you said, my name is Lou Maynard. I'm actually the vice president for the PTA for Newport News Council. And tonight, I would like to um, present four scholarships to four senior um, this evening. I would ask that Ms. Bertha Thompson and, well, <laughs> yes, she um, join me for just a brief moment so that we can um, do the awards, if that's okay with you all. Is that okay? Okay. Uh, when I call your names, if you can remain standing. You want to come on, Ms. Kevin? Um, Courtney Ciota. Courtney Ciota is a currently a senior at Mitchfield High School. In the fall, she's going to be attending Thomas Nelson Community College. <laughs> And Sanaya Higgs, she is a senior at Heritage High School. Sanaya will be attending college of William Mary in the fall. All right, all right. All right. All right. Um, Devin Hyman. Devin is a senior at Woodside High School. He will be attending Bridgewater College this fall. All right. <laughs> 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 Next we have Denise Smith. Denise is a senior at Achievable Dream High School. She will be attending Norfolk State um, University this fall. <laughs> Each of the seniors received a $500 scholarship Ooh. on behalf of the entire um, Newport News Council PTA. We would like to thank you for all that you've done this year and we wish you much success in the fall and the rest of the year. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Good luck, guys. Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, you said a president, so I hope that the next person to come up, I have, hope we have scholarships all evening. <laughs> 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 uh, next, we have uh, Kevin uh, Crowder. Crowder? Good afternoon, Mr. Hunter, mm -hmm. members of the board. Uh, thank you for allowing me the time to present before you. Um, I come to you on behalf of my son, Donovan, who is a student at Booker T. Washington. We transferred him from Crittenden Middle to Booker T. Uh, just before the Christmas holiday. And our issue has been with the bus situation, transportation situation. <clears throat> Initially, uh, when he transferred his first day, uh, actually riding the bus, I had to chase the bus driver down um, because she failed to even, I guess, look at her uh, card or report that she had a new stop. And then we came to find out that the stop where he was stopping, he was the only student. And the bus, both in dropping off and picking up, goes right pa past our house every day. We have since gotten uh, this situation rectified with the transportation department. 
However, I wanted to bring it to your attention because it should not have taken as much time and as much pain as it has. Uh, and then on the back end of it, uh, when the change did occur, the first day that the bus driver, uh, the morning bus driver decided to uh, come on the street, she decided she was going to, you know, not even come to the middle of the block as is pretty much stated whenever you look at a, uh, the bus, the transportation route, you know, it's the middle of the block. We live in Huntington Heights. So, of course, we're sandwiched by Warwick and Huntington, uh, Warwick Boulevard, Huntington Avenue, uh, both one-way streets. So <clears throat> her, the first day, she parked pretty much on the Huntington end, and he had to walk all the way down. And as soon as he got on the bus, the statement that was made to him was, she's not going to be picking up right in front of his door. And while that's not what we we're expecting, we definitely were expecting that she would come to the middle of the street. Um, and so just wanted to raise that, that to your attention as far as courtesy of bus drivers and understanding, as well as uh, some, some additional initiative upon the transportation department when uh, an issue is raised to say, hey, our kid is the only kid getting on the bus. Um, as well as when you have bus drivers say, hey, this student is the only one, you know, getting on at this stop um, <clears throat> to uh, make it simpler to make those bus, uh, those bus stop changes. And with that, I thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have um, Eric McCaskill. Good evening. Good, Good evening, evening, sir. Exciting evening. Uh, Dr. Parker and distinguished board members and fellow community stakeholders. Everyone stakeholders, raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just want to be sure. Uh, my name is Eric R. McCaskill. First of all, I'm a product of Newport News Public Schools. Grew up in the East End area. Uh, came from a, a family with absentee dad. Came from a family, absentee mom who chose to live in New York, but I had grandparents and neighbors and teachers to help a young man who had speech impediment, who had some issues, learning issues, to uh, graduate from Huntington High School as an athlete, go to Purdue University, and uh, next month will be the anniversary of the Black Cultural Center of which yours truly was uh, the voice for the students at Purdue University and will be recognized next month, June 29th. Yeah. I'm excited about the school division and how it's being advanced with creative energy of new leadership in ways that we have not experienced before. I can say this because I am a product of Newport News Public Schools. This being said, I, I stand before you today as a partner in education. Dr. Parker, your vision for post-entry post plan has an inclusive tool that I firmly believe would enhance the effective implementation of that vision, and I'll share that with you. As a master facilitator of the Evidence-Based Virtues Project, parent educator for the Juvenile and Domestic Relations Courts, and a consultant in restorative discipline, I know that the relevant changes of Newport News uh, that affects adults and children. As a parent educator, I have been trained in childhood trauma and the effects of adverse childhood experiences, or ACEs, and on school performance and behavior in our schools. As an advocate of student efficacy and master-based education, my team offers the standards of character, abbreviated SOC, in schools to resolve many of the challenges that confront Newport News Public Schools. The challenges that I know of are the disproportionate number of suspensions of African American learners, effective uh, classroom management, the need to assist administrative leadership that promotes inclusion and dignity in terms of young administrators. I, previous to this meeting, I met with Chief uh, Drew, and he brought another concern, and that's school-based arrest, where resource officers are, may arrest a student and to prevent 
uh, any type of incarceration, there's a restorative practice, which we can share more about. Um, having met our, your counterpart, Dr. Jeffrey Smith, he's open to the inclusion of a standards of character initiative. It takes a village with virtuous adults and resources to save our children. In the words of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, when people are caught up in doing what is right and are willing to sacrifice for it, there's no stopping point of victory. I decree and declare victory for our students, parents, and teachers in Newport News Public Schools. Thank you. And next we have uh, Ms. Jamie Bazemore. Good evening. Hope everyone is doing fine on this wonderful day. Mr. Chairman, the members of the school board, and Mr. Superintendent. The first thing that I want to say is, Mr. Superintendent, you did a crackerjack job of presenting the budget to the city council and most of all to the general public. I think a lot of the, that a lot of us understood more of the intricacies and the formulas and the pie charts as a whole. We understood that a lot better. Thanks to all of you that were involved in the budget process for your long, hard fight to get, get the school fully funded. Your hard work has not gone unnoticed, and I think that our city council received an education as well as now understand how serious we are about funding education in the city. The concerned citizens of Huntington and the Huntington Alumni Association are just as serious about the future of Huntington Middle School we feel that it is unacceptable that the doors of Huntington will close in June 2020 unless something is done now to alter this disastrous situation. We have asked that the sixth graders be brought back to Huntington at Heritage in September 2020. Sure, people say it's not, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not an ideal situation, but we do have a model which is achievable dream where the middle school and the high school are in the same location. The other thing is that Huntington at Heritage will be a temporary situation because we're gonna get the school rebuilt. <clears throat> we should be starting to rebuild Huntington in 2020. Instead, the mayor is telling us that it will be another two years before anything is started and funding of course, has not been allocated yet. With this unacceptable timeline, we are looking at there no longer being a Huntington Middle School for another four or five years. This is unacceptable. We are asking the school board and school division to please come up with a plan to keep Huntington's doors open. We continue to trust you to make sure that Huntington shall rise again. Please. Don't let us down. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. James Lovett, Jr. <clears throat> Good evening, uh, school board members, uh, superintendent, uh, Mr. Hunter and other school board members. My name is uh, James Lovett. I'm Lovett. from uh, 25 Riverlands Drive, Newport News, Virginia. I'm here on behalf of the Concerned Citizens Voter Registration uh, Drive. Um, I've been talking to several people and it's, a, it's in my heart to uh, do voter registration in the Newport News and the Hampton Public School System. I mean, I go over to the uh, the city, I mean, city hall, and I see there's three or four people working in the office in the voter registration office, and they just don't seem like to have enough time to go out to the schools to do voter registration. I mean, I'm retired military. I do substitute te teaching uh, when I want to or I can, and uh, I have a lot of free time, and it's in, within my heart to do voter registration within the school system, and I need some help. I need to get into those schools. I'm nonpartisan. I don't, you know, I don't tell people about, you know, who to vote for when, when I'm, you know, 
uh, with my voter registration cap on. You know, I mean, I tell them, hey, you know, like, I can't t talk to you about it because I'm doing voter registration, okay? Um, next thing is that um, I'm pleased and thankful to the school board for trying to make sure that Huntington Middle School is rebuilt. I mean, it's a need for Huntington Middle School to rebuild, be rebuilt in uh, the Southeast area. Um, and uh, the third thing is, um, mm, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Peggy Purcell. recently and I thought that I might share it with you. Do you know who Collis P. Huntington was? Well, now you do know. He was the man that envisioned education for blacks, not to include Hampton University and a school down in Georgia, I believe, where he, Alabama, thank you for the correction. Um, this man was dedicated, and he was the one who first came up with the idea of a Huntington High School and a Huntington High School for Blacks. Now, he had that, that, that vision during the 18, early 1900s. What is wrong with us? He left us that school for a reason. He wanted to make sure that black children were educated, and he took it one step further, even illiterate blacks who were slaves. He was very instrumental in them receiving educations as well. And like I've taken the time to say, he's left us with that vision that he had. And right now, I just feel that the vision is being stomped. Um, Huntington High School is going to be torn down. And it seems like that will be the end of it, but it won't. Because with every breath I have in my body, every bit of blood that I have going through my veins, I will not give up on this. I will be standing here until y'all say that it's a done deal and nothing else can be done. I wonder what Collis P. Huntington is thinking right now. As I look at the school board, many of you are blacks. This was a white man who took it upon his, himself to make sure that the blacks in East End had a school. Something to think about. Okay. Are there any more cards? Are there any more cards? Are there any more cards? There being none, we will move the agenda to item number three, our consent agenda. 3.01, the minutes, City Council School Board Joint Meeting, April 16, 2019. 3.02, the minutes, work session, April 16, 2019. 3.03, minutes, regular meeting, April 16, 2019. 3.04, Financial Reports, Child Nutrition Services, April 2019, Revenue and Expenses, April 2019. 3.05, Personnel Report, 3.06, Aviation Academy Lease, and 3.07, a VSBA Legislative Proposal. Uh, you have that in your package. Can we get a motion for approval of the consent agenda? So moved. Second. You heard the motion and you heard the second. Time for the question. It's not Ms. Simon. <laughs> I actually do, do have a, a comment. I was going through the financial narrative, and I just wanted to point something out for the public. Um, we did have, we did underspend our budget this year by six million, and the things that we are spending this on are really vital projects, and I just want to make sure everybody understands that. Water and intrusion and mold mitigation at Heinz and Gildersleeve, paving, clock replacements, fire and intrusion upgrades, computer refresh, um, carpet and flooring in 10 schools, electrical panel replacement in seven schools. Like these are really important things that we, we are using this cash capital for. So I just want to make sure everybody understands 
that when there is some cash capital at the end of the year that we're putting it toward real needs that we have in, in all of our schools. And I just, I saw that today when I was reading through and I just wanted to make sure that everybody, and for transparency, that people understand that when there is, um, uh, there are funds that weren't spent, that they go to very needy um, projects in our schools. That's all, sorry. No, anyone? Um, Vice, Vice Chair, Mr. Brown. Just a comment about the Aviation Academy in, in terms of the, uh, we, are, we are spending uh, money paying to that to the Airport Commission. Uh, for the facility uh, that we're using. And over time, we've not seen the facility um, maintained in a, in a manner that we, uh, that is, feels in the, in the best interest of kids. And so I do see that we're uh, going for one more year, but I want us to, uh, the, I want to bring to the board's attention and the public's attention that that is a facility that is in need of repair and attention. And uh, that is not, uh, similar to all of our other facilities, it's, it's not a sustainable condition. Anyone else? <clears throat> uh, there being none, Ms. Buffalo, please call the roll. Four. Four. Mrs. Hills Wall. Four. 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 Dr. Best. Four. Mr. Brown. Four. Mr. Ely. Four. Mr. Harris. Four. Motion carries seven zero. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we'll move on to um, the action items. Item 4.1. A proposed textbooks uh, adoption. We heard the report at our last meeting. Uh, if there's any no questions, could we get a motion for approval? So moved. Second. You heard the motion. You heard the second. It's time for the question. There being none, Ms. Buffalo, please call the roll. Mr. Hunter. Four. Ms. Simon. Four. Mrs. Searles Law. Four. Dr. Best. Four. Mr. Brown. Four. Mr. Ely. Four. Mr. Harris. Four. Motion carries 7 0. Okay. All right. All right. Bless you. <laughs> Our next item, uh, 4.02, the budget approval. Um, uh, Dr. Parker, do you have anything to uh, enlighten us on that, real quick? Uh, unless the board has questions, uh, Mr. Chairman, we submitted the information in the uh, board packet uh, as uh, just for the public's um, information. Uh, the city did pass a budget uh, recently. Uh, our request, uh, our ask from the city was uh, $2.4 million to be included in our operational budget to balance the, uh, the proposed, our approved FY20 budget. Uh, the city did pass a budget uh, that uh, that gave us $2.4 million in cash capital that would be available in the city's um, operational budget. However, this budget that we're putting before you tonight will not increase our operational budget by $2.4 million. We, the, the, op, the amount of the operational budget will still be the same as this current year, um, which is, uh, is $110.9 million. So uh, that would reflect level funding of the operational budget for the FY20 period. However, some of our, you've also been inclu included with a list of items that we will provide the city and uh, maintenance related items that can be paid with cash capital out of their budget. Uh, hearing that, Mr. Chair, we ask that you approve this budget, which will allow us to move forward with the initiatives that we, uh, that we have identified in the FY20 budget, which includes compensation, um, the, uh, the addressing our health care uh, needs and staffing needs uh, that were proposed, that were passed by this board at them at, in, in March. Okay. Uh, do you have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. You heard the motion. You heard the second. Time for the question. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just a question of clarification. So the 2.4 million in cash capital, uh, when is that money scheduled to be received or to be spent in the fall or in this budget? According to the city manager, um, and uh, I, I do not have a written document to 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 uh, reflect that conversation, but according to the city manager, uh, that money those monies will be reflected in their uh, it was reflected in the budget that they passed in cash capital. So uh, upon approving that budget, those dollars should be available as of July first. Um, I would advise the board um, to consider a resolution uh, at the June meeting, um, which may also reflect the uh, commitment to Huntington. The, uh, the access to the $2.4 million in cash capital 
uh, and our commitment to uh, work with them on long-range initiatives, such as a res uh, resolu uh, revenue sharing agreement and long-term commitment to, uh, to funding uh, capital, capital improvement uh, needs, such as new construction and renovations. I believe that we have to have a paper trail uh, with these type of agreements that we put, that we engage in with the city. Uh, sometimes when you have it, something in writing, it leads to a better relationship and a better partnership. Uh, so I would advise the board, since we are just going with conversations at this point, um, to move forward with a, um, with a resolution to reflect that not only our commitment, but our ask uh, and, cl and clarification of, of how that will be handled. Um, thank you, Dr. Parker. Um, we've been advised by you uh, just now. So I believe that by next meeting, we will have a resolution, and then we can have an itemized a list of those things that uh, the $2.4 million will pay for. And then we have that resolution, and then we can approve it, and that way we can uh, then forward it on to the city council uh, for their record. Is that uh, correct, from our legal? Okay, did we all agree with that? We, we, didn't, we didn't vote, but. Uh, we'll have something to vote on uh, at our next meeting. So you heard the motion, you heard the second. Uh, any more questions? Uh, and Mr. Chairman, just for, for clarity about the vote that we're about to take, uh, so we, uh, for the public's uh, awareness, there's about $110 million is what the city has um, uh, proposed to provide us, which would be level funding. It's the same amount of funding that we received last year in the operating budget. We went to the city to make a request of an additional $2.4 million in our operating funds, and that request was not fulfilled. And instead, the funds are, uh, we're gonna be uh, able, to, we have a promise to use some capital funds in the future, but no additional operating funds were provided by the city. Uh, um, that is correct that uh, we, the budget that we did submit um, on paper, and to be clear, um, the budget was, they they did approve. They're giving us enough they money. Ma they matched the dollar they, they amount. Dollar amount. They did not did increase not our operating enough. budget. Okay. Right. And so that's a that's a difference. Um, that suffice for the, this year. It's a short term fix. It's a one year fix. So we did not get the budget increase. And, and I'm only bringing that to bring that to mind because the money not being in an operating budget means that we cannot use it year over year, which means that it impacts our ability to support salaries, benefits, and other things for our staff having one-time cash capital funds, then it can only be used one time for a cash project. So it's not, so we do not receive money that is sustainable for operations. Uh, that is correct. So those uh, individuals, those additional staffs that we uh, are going to hire with those funds, uh, if we get no money next year, we are on the hook uh, to come out of our operating budget to uh, pay for those salaries. Okay. Those yeah, additional that, salaries. Right, and with that being said, Mr. Chairman, I agree with the resolution, uh, but I also think the board uh, need to get some recommendations uh, on uh, other than the resolution, which, which is great. Uh, I think we have to know what our options are, and I'm talking legal options. Uh, I'm sure no one wants to hear that conversation, uh, but at the end of the day, we are we are tasked with the we, uh, we were elected uh, to serve our kids fully, um, and I would like to know. Uh, what is my left and right limits? Uh, so if, if this fails again, you know, what are our options uh, to move forward uh, to force them uh, to support us? Thank you. Um, we can certainly, uh, Ms. Wall and I can certainly provide you um, information Thank about you. your options in reference to what you may feel as an underfunded operational. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Anyone, city. anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Okay, uh, Ms. Buffalo, uh, call the roll. Mr. Hunter? Four. Ms. Simons? Four. Ms. Searles Law? Four. Dr. Best? Four. Mr. Brown? Four. Mr. Ely? Four. Mr. Harris? Four. Motion carries seven zero. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, that's why I love this board. I can see the passion um, about uh, getting, having enough funds uh, to do the work that we need to do in order to educate our students here. So again, on, I'm, I would like to thank my board and Dr. Parker and his team, Mary Lou and her team for uh, presenting a budget that was just, and even though uh, it was not funded in the manner that we would want it to fund it, 
we have lots of work to do in front of us. Uh, let's move the agenda. Item, we have a new item here. We've got an item, uh, 4.03, nomination for Mr. Douglas Brown for VSBA Tidewater uh, Regional Chair. Uh, just to kind of give you an insight, uh, our vice chair on our board, uh, Mr. Brown, is currently the vice chair of the Tidewater region of the VSBA. And he represents us um, as the vice, well, he's the vice chair for the whole region. Uh, Mr. Brown seeks uh, the chair position for the coming year in order for him to, uh, part of the nomination submittal process, uh, this board, by majority vote, must agree uh, to have him uh, run on behalf of our board. And also, that decision must be done in the open and attest to here at a formal board meeting. So to, to help uh, Mr. Brown out, um, we put it on agenda so that he can get all the necessary paperwork. And you know, we wish him good luck. And I know he would do a wonderful job as the chair you whip us in shape, you know. <laughs> and so I know you'll whoop, uh, you'll get the tie water, uh, uh, continue and do things better for them as well. So if no one has any questions, can we get a motion um, to have Mr. Douglas Brown, our vice chair, put his name in the middle paperwork to be the chair of the tie water region? So moved. Second. You heard the motion and you heard the second. Uh, time for the question. There being none. Ms. Buffalo, please call the roll. My pleasure. Mr. Hunter? Four. Ms. Simons? Four. Mrs. Searles Law? Four. Dr. Best? Four. Mr. Brown? Oh, abstain. Oh, you abstain, <laughs> okay. Go for yourself. You go for yourself. I'll abstain, I'll abstain. I'll abstain. <laughs> Ms. <laughs> Mr. Ely? Four. Mr. Harris? Four. Motion carries six. Yay, one abstain. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Those are great things are happening in Newport News Public School, even on this school board. Uh, we're going to move to reports. Uh, first report we have is 5.01, the federal funding application. Uh, Ms. Robinson will give us a report. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, school board chair, Mr. Hunter, vice chair, Mr. Brown, board members, and Dr. Parker. The federal program team appreciate the opportunity to support the division's academic agenda by providing strategic support that aligns with Every Student Succeed Act, or ESSA. I will be sharing the federal funding plan and application for Title I, Title II, Title III, and Title IV grants for the 2019 2020 school year. In addition, I will share a three-year trend and expenditures for each grant. At this time, the VDOE has asked that we use level funding for each of our grants for the 2019-20 school year. The purpose of our team, and I have to say I have a very supportive team. They all stayed this evening and uh, with support all in the back <laughs> row there, so I do appreciate them coming out and supporting me. Again, the purpose of our team is to secure um, and manage the federal grant that support equitable services to students. The support is provided through, um, in the amounts of, for Title I, $9.5 million plus some. For Title II, in the amount of $1.1 plus million. Uh, for Title III, $151,080. And uh, for Title IV, Part A, $682,787. The programs are meant to complement what currently is offered in Newport News Public Schools. Uh, and at this point, I want to provide a quick visual of some of the things that we do with all of our title uh, federal programs uh, grants.
It's always time to celebrate when you have an opportunity to look at those, those young faces. Um, so again, I want to review for Title I, what I want to do is give you, provide you with a three-year trend. And the purpose of Title I is to meet the needs of students by ensuring fair, equal, and uh, significant opportunities to improve academic achievement in schools with the highest concentration of low-income families. And as you review the, the slide, you can see that the first two years um, there was a bit of an increase, but then the last year uh, for 2018-19, there was a decrease. The, they did tell us ahead of time that there will be a decrease so that we could plan accordingly. So um, again, our Title I, the focus again is for our um, elementary. We have four pre-K centers that we use those funds for, as well as 14 elementary schools. And this totals over 9,000 kids that uh, we use these funds to uh, support. Uh, here are the list of schools. Again, as you can see, they're all elementary or pre-K. These are the schools that uh, the Title I funds at 9.9 .9 million support. And as far as Title I support uh, pre-K uh, identified elementary schools, uh, the bulk of that money is for salaries and benefits. Uh, over, I think it's about 95% of those funds go for salary and benefits, um, specifically supporting interventionists and also a, a great deal of our pre-K staff. And then of course there's a, a small portion for miscellaneous uh, contract services, transportation, things of that nature. For Title II, um, this one is for teacher equity. The purpose of Title II again uh, improves the quality of teacher leadership through recruitment and professional development. And as you can see, each one of those years, the three-year trend is showing a, a decrease, um, especially the 17-18. Again, uh, part of this could be, was due to the fact that Title II funds, some of those funds or some of those services was moved over into another grant. So that showed a, a, a significant decrease for the 17-18 year. And this particular grant serves pre-K all the way through 12th grade and also uh, professional development opportunities for the entire staff. For Title II, the bulk of Title II's uh, funds go into instruction, specialists and coaches. Um, so that it's salary and, and fringe benefits. Uh, small portion for miscellaneous and then there is a portion for private schools. So we do support our private schools uh, with some of those funds as well. For Title III, this is our language instruction for English learner and immigrant students. We have, again, 151,000. As you can see, over the past three years, this, um, these funds have increased about $5,000 or so uh, over the, the past three years. And the bulk of that, those funds come from the school division. So we do have a lot of funds uh, for Title III that comes out of uh, school, school division support. Again, if you look at how we break down Title III, uh, ESL, um, school and family engagement personnel, and then small portions for technology as well as professional development, and then also miscellaneous. <clears throat> then our Title IV is somewhat of a new grant. We uh, started 1718. This grant is a two-year grant. Uh, our first funds, of course, was 261, and then we increased a great deal. Uh, and this grant serves all of Newport News K through 12. Some of the things that we do with this particular grant, they actually break this grant into three different sections. One is well-rounded, safe and healthy, and then technology. And we break the, the funds down to be able to provide support for other programs throughout the um, division. Some of them listed there, AP and IB uh, training and counseling, bullying, active lifestyle, of course, professional development. And then along, uh, in addition with this grant, we also provide some funds for our private schools as well. And then um, our federal programs department also works with Virginia Preschool Initiative. Uh, 
for pre-K centers, 72 classes, 1,296 students that we serve, and that is in the amount of 4.5 million, as well as our school improvement grants. Uh, this year, we are serving eight schools, five elementary and three middle school, in the amount of 4.9 million. Mm -hmm. And uh, overview, again, Title I, 9.5 million plus, Title II, 1.1 million plus, Title III, 151,000, and then Title IV, 682 plus, for a total of uh, 11.5 plus million dollars that we work with throughout our, our department. So our next step is for board approval by June uh, 2019 and to be submitted to the Virginia Department of Education on July 1st, excuse me, July 1st, 2019. And at this point, I would like to thank all of you for listening, and if you have any questions, I will do my best to answer. Any questions? Oh, no questions? Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, appreciate you. Okay. Next, we'll have um, 5.02, uh, our handbook revisions. Good evening, Mr. Hunter, Dr. Parker, members of the board. I'm delighted to be here this evening, and I'm pleased to bring to you a proposed revision to the Rights and Responsibilities Handbook. As we begin this evening, I would like to remind you that our Rights and Responsibilities Handbook is a tool that provides guidance to our students, our families, and our staff. This is why this book is important. I would like to once again share with you our youth development model. You have seen this document many times before because it is a living, breathing document that we constantly update and revise. Level one are our supports for all students. Level two are supports for some students. And level three are supports for a few students. In taking a closer look at level one, our universal supports for all students, here we find the Rights and Responsibilities Handbook. There are several phases to our revision process. After reviewing guidelines and recommendations, we began to gather stakeholder input from multiple groups. Recommendations and information gathered from the VDOE student conduct guidelines, which are in the revision phase right now, and the General Assembly. Our student discipline data is also used in this process a detailed review of the 1819 discipline will be provided at a later time. Additionally, our stakeholder input this year included SAGE students, school-based administrators, central office staff, and families. Once again this year, we were able to survey our families through ParentView. We received over 1,000 responses. 86% reported the handbook easy to locate, 86% found it easy to understand, and 86% said it was a helpful resource. So, after gathering feedback from our students, our administrators, our staff, our families, and more, I am delighted to bring to you this evening one recommended change to our Rights and Responsibilities Handbook. <laughs> This is a new piece of legislation that was passed by the General Assembly and signed into law by the governor that, needed to, that needs to be included into our handbook this year. This is an amendment to the current Rule 11 violation. This change will add language, will add the language nicotine vapor products to the Rule 11 violation, which addresses the use of tobacco and nicotine products. As we look ahead to next year, there are two items to be evaluated, the dress code policy 
and the cell phone policy. We plan to evaluate those two policies with different groups of stakeholders, including citywide student government, SAGE, parent, teacher advisory groups, and administrators. In March of this year, we launched the Student Discipline Task Force, which focuses on examining practices around student discipline in Newport News Public Schools. Part of the work of the Student Discipline Task Force is to develop revision recommendations for the Rights and Responsibilities Handbook for the 2020-21 school year. Thank you for giving me this opportunity this evening to present this proposed revision to the Rights and Responsibilities Handbook. At this time, I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have. Uh, Ms. Jones? Um, great report. I just have a quick question. Yes, ma'am. Um, so it seems to me, and I, I, there's like a little bit of kind of discontention and um, frustration within the student body that we've been hearing that the dress code has been under evaluation since for the past few years. Mm -hmm. um, so my question really is when will the dress code stop being under evaluation and start actually being changed because we're still suffering the same grievances um, that we've been trying to address for the past few years. Thank you for your question. It's a very good question. Um, I think one of the things that we're going to do is we're working with our administrators on how we're going to apply it so it's applied more um, consistently across the division. In addition to, as I've stated um, previously in this um, presentation, we will definitely evaluate it and we're going to take this topic to the table and speak with all stakeholders and definitely bring something back to the board for consideration so. for the upcoming, so. So. for the 2021 school year. And, the, and I was going to reiterate the same thing, Maria. Um, I think we have to have the dialogue necessary to get something of, of substance that we can bring back to the board, who, is the po who are the policy-making body. And uh, we haven't come to consensus on what that is. I know we had a workshop earlier and talked about dress code, but I don't think we reached much consensus even in that group or had the time to really flesh out the ideas that the students shared at that, at that SAGE meeting. Uh, we do intend to follow up on that sage on the recommendations that were collected at that sage meet, meeting under new leaders under the new leadership and hopefully bring policy to the board next year that they can can consider but they are the policy making body the principals have to weigh in on that the teachers and, every, and all of our other stakeholders parents uh stakeholders who we have not heard from yet in terms of dress code um, or revisions okay thank you yes all right uh, dr best um, I, too, would like to commend you for a very um, thorough job with Thank the student you. handbook. Um, as a former administrator, I was very familiar with the Rights and Responsibilities Handbook. And so when parents call, it makes me feel really good that I can open up that book. I keep it with me. I actually have two copies. And I can refer them to that student handbook. And everything is there. And even a couple of the parents. They, well, so something you might consider is I don't know how we can get them to actually read it and maybe just peruse it just to familiar, because they were like, I've had it, but I never looked at it before, but I can take them to pages, I can take them to what the infraction is, I can take them to the range of consequences. So it's a, it's a really good document, and I would just like to uh, let you know, publicly know that. Thank you. So good job. Thanks. And, um, Mr. M Vice Chair. Yeah, a similar comment that I think the Rights and Responsibilities Handbook as well, it's a very comprehensive document. It's great that it gives you a range uh, of things and, um, so that you're able to communicate with the public. Well, if this is what's happened, this, this is what this is the, the punishment that you can expect or the consequences that you can expect from the division. So it's, it's great in terms of the, the, uh, uh, the transparency that we're able to, to show to the public. And along those lines, um, question, do, do, can we have a quiz or is there a test <laughs> to give to students and parents on the rights and responsibilities handbook? We consider something like that to ensure that they are reading it and actually digesting it because um, what we find is that oftentimes they haven't read it until something happens and then that's when they suddenly become a you know, very astute <laughs> uh, reader of the, of the handbook. <laughs> uh, and then, and then my, my second question was just around, um, we've talked a lot about the, the good behavior policy in the past and um, that's a, I think it's a, you know, a great idea and uh, that was presented to the board previously that a student who has exhibited good behavior over a period of time can petition to have uh, their record um, revised, uh, to have infractions removed from their record. But there were still some, a lot of things to be ironed out as far as what kinds of things could be removed 
and uh, what was the what was the, the full process for getting things removed from their record? Uh, have we put some additional thought into that, or when can we expect to the, come back to the board with the uh, the full detailed plan of of the good behavior policy and how uh, it can be carried out? Okay, to address your first question, um, what we encourage people to do using their PBIS processes that we have in place, the positive behavioral interventions that supports um, at the beginning of the school year and throughout the school year because we want to reinforce those expectations. Um, we encourage them to go to their kids' rights and their responsibilities that are laid out clearly in, I think, page two of the Rights and Responsibilities Handbook um, and kind of review that so the kids understand the right and the responsibility that they have as students in our school division. Um, also, going to your second question regarding the um, good behavior policy, we do have a guiding document that the administrators have, and it kind of outlines to them and gives them suggestions on how to build their committee um, to um, uh, review the good behavior applications that are submitted. And we do have laid, um, within that document, that guiding document, uh, uh, things that, that will not be considered um, as um, okay to remove from students' records. So one thing that we can do um, as when we provide the 1819 um, discipline review to you all, we I would be happy to also include a little more in-depth information um, around good behavior. Anyone else? Uh, thank you. Well, all right. As a reminder, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, um, I seek your approval of the proposed revision of the Rights and Responsibilities Handbook at the June 18th board meeting. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We have another report, 5.03, Extended Learning, taking a look at SPARK and STEP. Mr. Tyler. Good evening, Chairman Hunter, Vice Chairman Brown, Dr. Parker, all members of the board. Um, I'm Anthony Tyler. I'm the Extended Learning Administrator here for Newport News Public Schools, and I will be presenting this evening, Extended Learning, taking a look at SPARK and STEP. Our summer program for arts, recreation, and knowledge, famously known as SPARK, exposes students to coursework from the upcoming grade, giving them a jump start on success and preventing and eliminating summer slide. SPARK is a free, kid, free to kindergarten through eighth grade students enrolled in Newport News Public Schools and includes meals and transportation. SPARK offers a wide range of learning opportunities, including enrichment activities beyond the academic period. SPARK was recognized as a National School Boards Association Magna Award winner for exemplary and innovative student learning. In 2015, we had 2,000 students in SPARK. Then it grew to 5,500 in 2016. And for summers 2017 and 2018, we reached 6,000 students. And we are projected to have 6,000 plus for this summer 2019. As you are all aware, during SPARK 2018, we had an evaluation from an outside agency, the Schaefer Evaluation Group. Um, here are a few quotes from Dr. Patricia Schaefer from the evaluation that was presented to you all back in March. Teachers at both elementary and middle school level described their Spark students as being more ready to learn, more excited about learning, and just more primed to get back in the classroom after summer. And Spark students generally expressed more confidence in STEM projects. Middle school students that talk and were particularly confident about math skills. I will say in my work as a program evaluator, I work with a lot of school districts, Schaefer said. I don't often see this. So this was a big aha moment when we received this data back. Schaefer called these grades, especially fifth grade, which had the highest achievement, the sweet spot for influencing academic achievement. From, from this walk evaluation, we had some recommendations. And so with Newport New Public Schools, we are here to ensure that schools um, that attend SPARK achieve academic success. Following topics will be addressed this year. Curriculum revision, remediation to increase literacy and math skills, and student selection. During the, evalua the evaluation presentation that was presented to the school board in March, there were some steps to improve SPARK presented to you. With the assistance of our curriculum and development department, the following changes have been made to, to improve SPARC 27, 20, I'm sorry, to improve SPARC 2019. 
Criteria developed to identify students needing remediation. Students needing remediation to receive priority enrollment. Curriculum revised to reinforce math and reading based on SOL trends. Target lead daily remediation component added for students. And additional remediation through the Newport News and Women Mary cohort members. Let's take a look at our daily spark program. We have seven um, sites this year. We have three K2 sites, which would be Denby Early Childhood Center, Marshall Early Learning Center, and Central Elementary School. And we have three, three, five sites, which is Epps Elementary, Newsom Park Elementary, and Yates Elementary. Our morning part of Spark consists of the Elementary Learning Lab. The Learning Lab is an innovative approach to ignite learning for elementary students. The instructional program provides a balance between direct teaching and student application through problem solving. The Learning Lab STEM infused curriculum offers reinforcement in areas of reading, writing, and math while challenging students to apply their learning through STEM based approaches. The afternoon portion of Spark is the more enrichment based that is served through our community partners. That includes we have we do STEM activities, career readiness um, initiatives, and field trips for our students. Our middle school portion of Spark 6th through 8th grade will be housed at Gildersleeve Middle School this summer. The morning part of Spark Middle School looks like with our English camp. The English Spark camp provides students an opportunity to continue building essential literacy skills in the areas of critical reading, writing, communication, and research from previous year through remediation with enriching experiences to enhance performance in the next year of English. The math camp provides students an opportunity to fill the gaps in their understanding from the previous year through remediation and simultaneously front-loading specific skills for the next year. And the afternoon piece for the middle school as well is a enrichment with through community business partners, field trips, and other experiences. And here are a list of our confirmed Spark partners for 2019. There were 23 partners that will be working in Spark this summer. And here's our Spark timeline. Um, currently, we are we just closed the window for student applications last Friday the 17th, and letters will be sent home to students whether they've been accepted into the program or on the waiting list on by the 31st of um, May. And then the first day of the high school session will begin on June 20th, and then the first day of our K-8 Spark program will begin on July 8th. And then the last day for all of Spark high school and elementary through sixth grade um, will end on August 1st. And now we have a new addition to our extended learning family. We have a new addition to our extended learning summer family, and that is the summer training and enrichment program, finally known as STEP. I'm um, especially pleased that Newport News Public Schools will be running the in-school STEP program. This aligns nicely with our SPARK program and other extended learning programs. As a school division, we are committed to ensuring that students have access to learning beyond a regular school day. We know that children who lack summer learning programs are at particular risk of losing academic, social, and emotional, and they have gains throughout in what they have gained throughout the school year. The 2019 STEP program des um, design has a new model for service delivery. Our goal is to transition STEP from a 10-week summer program to a systematic year-round initiative. The City of Newport News will serve as the fiscal agent of three strategic partners to deliver a program over a 12-month period. These partners include Hampton, the Hampton Roads Community Action Program, better known as HRCAP. They will be running the out-of-school program for young adults from ages 18 to 24. Newport News Public Schools that will be running the in-school program for students 16 to 18 years old, and the New Horizons Regional Education Center that will be providing workforce training and support to all STEP participants. All those STEP stands for Summer Training and Enrichment Program. Our vision is to serve high school students in the summer and the year round. And that goes beyond training. This slide gives you an overview of the basic program. We will be targeting 200 students from five high schools, Denby, Heritage, Menchville, Warwick, and Woodside. Those students will be placed in a cohort per high school. During the school year, those students, we will be focusing on those students, working with them once a month after school, and giving them bi-monthly experiences, whether it's 
um, soft skill training, workforce development, taking them on field trips, bringing in guest speakers, talking about the workforce. Our goal is for students to increase attendance, do better in their classwork, make good decisions, become active part of their community, and develop soft skills and workforce qualifications that will make them competitive in the job market. We welcome this opportunity to enrich the lives of even more students in Newport News Public Schools and to help them develop the skills that will make them competitive in today's workforce. Students in the School Division STEP program will receive in terms of career counseling, academic support, and opportunities to share what they have learned through community service. And here's the timeline of the STEP program for our students. We, the application window just closed last Friday and we are in the process of reviewing student applications this week. Students will be notified and then we will be having student orientation in June once school lets out for the students for the program. And that concludes my, my presentation on summer learning, Spark and STEP. Uh, any questions? Uh, just uh, add, add, when will the students start working? They will, so, begin, they will begin work on July 8th. That's the same day as our regular SPARC program, and they will end August 1st, just like I'll keep them on the same schedule okay. as SPARC. And could you speak quickly to the type of student we're, we're looking for in this program? Yes, sir. Um, we are looking for students that meet certain criteria, whether they receive free reduced lunch, they come from a single-parent household, they've had some academic troubles, some uh, behavioral issues that might have been in some of our, um, like, enterprise or or uh, the juvenile detention system. So we're looking for those type of kids to try to give them opportunities to give them a new direction and a new view on the workforce and some life skills. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Ely. Have we had a lot of employers to, in the community sign up to be hosts for this program this year? On May 3rd, um, Dr. Parker, Mr. Wright, and myself, we attended um, a partnership lunch over at the Holiday Inn. The city sponsored that and that we believe there were 50 community partners that at that time had registered and I know we received some emails since then and so I would say 50 plus partners will be hosting job sites this summer. Are we still in need for more businesses to be partners for this program? I believe so. We'll, we'll, we'll probably take some more. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, Dr. Bess. Yes, ma'am. Oh, sorry. I, I think I I think I kind of know the answer, but the reason why Achievable Dream is not included is because they have some similar things in place, yes, or yes, can you just? Well, they do, have some, the they do have some things in place, and then their, their schedule, summer schedule, is a little bit with intercession. It's, it's conflict. Yes, conflict. Okay. okay. Ms. Simons. So I remember that many of the STEP students were concerned about their salary and earning money. Mm -hmm. Is there a difference in terms of like what are the the job prospects for the 16 to 18 year olds that we're having, and then what about the 18 to 24 year olds that HR cap has? Like, what are the different employment well, situations? With I'm, I'm going to speak to our in school population, uh -huh. 16 to 18 year olds. Um, the number one goal is for our students because the question came up about working versus summer school. We want our kids to go to summer school and be able to make their credits and be able to graduate on time. So we're working with the business partners to make sure those students be, that do attend summer school will be able to work after. And so, we, so they'll be able to still earn, make money, but still get the grades and the need that they need in order to graduate on time. Okay. So is it more that the HR cap, the older, the 18 to 20 year old, 24 year olds, they are having more full-time employment over yes. the summer? Yes. I, I, that's the goal with them, to get them started, okay. get, them be, get them on their feet to be full-time employed. Thank you. Yes. One more question. And how many students are y'all taking for STEP again? We're taking 200. 200. Yes, sir. Do, you, do we think that's enough students to fill the capacity of the needs of children that meets those qualifications of being underserved? I'm going to say no, but I'm going to give you an explanation with that. In the past, the city's always targeted about 500 kids, right. but by us taking over the program, handling the in-school population, we wanted to start with a number that we could, we could manage right now that will grow in the future. So how, is there like a waiting list or how does that work? Well, once we review all the applications, students that aren't selected, that they will be put on a waiting list and they will be in consideration. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Brown. So uh, I love, you know, personally really uh, enjoyed and loved summer school. Uh, and I tell people this all the time that I went to summer school every single summer. Um, <laughs> Uh, my mother made me go to summer school every single summer. Um, so, and you know, the, but the, the, the power of, of public school, one of the powers is the diversity 
uh, that exists within uh, public schools and diversity of learners. And so the, just the challenge that I would um, put forward is let's make sure that we're getting a good diversity of learners because I, what I hear is um, the re I hear the remediation part and that's you know very necessary for a lot of learners that, that need that. Uh, and then but the uh, step program, it sounds like it's where the opportunities are not for uh, everyone and we want to try to get everyone, give them an opportunity to get involved. My own family and my, myself, I would love the opportunity to do uh, advancement during the summer. Mm -hmm. And um, long, I've long been a proponent of that, and I think that's really critically important for uh, kids having an opportunity to work and get ahead, the kids who want to challenge themselves in that way and want to push themselves to have an opportunity to get ahead. So um, I hope that as we continue to evolve the program, um, summer school can become popular. Mm -hmm. I know right uh, at present it may have a kind of a stigma of, hey, these are, these are the kids who got to, they have to go to summer school as opposed to you get to go to summer school. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted, uh, the, the part that we have in the afternoon is the great that you get to go to Spark, but also um, I wanna make sure that uh, let's get involving more of the learners as well who wanna advance themselves and, and do the uh, moving ahead uh, and getting those kids in the program yes, too. I believe the the good news is I think we're we're working our way backwards. I think the, I think the kids who want advancement and enrichment are have already bought into the Spark train uh, with all of the um, select activities that kids have in the afternoons, and we're seeing a lot of those students who who uh, select to participate. The per, the attendance in Spark has grown every year. It's been a very successful model. Uh, where we're trying to uh, backtrack is that just going back to the presentation this, this at the workshop day and making that connection. We have a significant number of students who have deficits and uh, who, who would benefit also from a uh, structured remedial program in the summer that would allow them to continue to work on their math literacy and, uh, and, uh, and, and, reading, and reading and writing skills in addition to the remediation. So how do we find a happy marriage where we can continue to address uh, the needs of our students who need to uh, catch up, but also continue to provide enrichment opportunities that uh, that that students who are doing well can address the summer slide from their standpoint. Spark was built primarily for summer slide, um, which is for students who uh, who are at grade level, and we don't want them to slip back. Um, so I think there's a happy marriage that we have to find, Mr. Brown, in, in terms of uh, providing that it, that incentive for both students. And I believe that we've done a good job with the STEM-related activities and the field trips and other the activities in the afternoon that allow students who, um, to, to remain engaged um, in summer learning. Uh, also, we, we uh, would like to focus more on, on uh, across the division and across the city, partnering with our partners to address summer reading. Uh, we need to build uh, students, continue to encourage students to read for pleasure over the summer. Um, and that's something that we all can continue to, uh, maybe the YMCA, the boys club, the rec leagues, and everything else, if we could all get on the same page um, to do that, I think that would be a very powerful thing in our city as well. Because the more kids read, uh, the better the better their vocabulary becomes. That addresses summer slide in itself. Uh, and uh, I think we're we're well on our way to, to working with our partners to to really start to collaborate on summer reading. Any further questions? Anyone else? Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity. Okay. <clears throat> Item number four point uh, five point oh four. Attendance report 5.05, .05, membership report 5.06, construction report uh, were a part of your package. If no one has any uh, comments on those, we'll move to item 5.07, comments by the superintendent, Dr. Parker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Before I begin my, uh, my prepared uh, remarks, uh, I, I was reminded that uh, this week is boss's week. So that, that, that in, in lieu of a gift, I just wanted to say some good things about my bosses uh, while, I have the, <laughs> while I have the opportunity to do so. So uh, I really, uh, two things I just want to say is I really appreciated the board's engagement during our budget, um, our budget uh, development uh, cycle. I think we all learned a little bit together. I think we were a, a cohesive group and a, and, a, and a common voice. And I think while we all uh, address, you know, kind of handle our passions in different ways, um, I think we, uh, we, I think this board did a very good job of communicating with not only the community but also our business and uh, partners and also our teachers association. Uh, so I want to thank the board for 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 the work that you've done. Also, uh, while we didn't get the outcome that we had uh, had, had looked for, uh, that doesn't diminish the work that was done and the decision making and developing a quality budget 
that we feel meets the needs of our employees uh, and, our, and our facilities and our instructional program in the city. And I think we've done good work in crafting and communicating what this school division needs to move forward. So I want to appreciate, uh, I definitely appreciate your work there. I also would like to thank the board members for attending all of the many events and chicken dinners uh, <laughs> over the past few weeks, uh, all the recognition uh, dinners and, and uh, awards programs and all of the other things. Um, you know, there's, there's just something to say about your, your commitment and generosity of time that uh that uh that that's very important and it shows your values and i think uh to a person on this board i think we we've really uh, been present uh to support our employees to support to to support our community so thank you for that as well and uh while my staff has not given me my boss's day gift yet i'm just gonna <laughs> throw that out there uh, <laughs> I, I i do appreciate every look at look around okay i just want to make sure i put that out there um I do want to tell you I appreciate everything that you do to support our division for the school division and thank you so much. Now, um, just talking about some of those um, uh, events coming up that we've, that we've partake in, partaken in. On Saturday, um, I attended the annual Hampton Roads 200 plus men's breakfast. I think se se many of us were there. This group of men performed great work in our community and serve as mentors to young men across Hampton Roads. We had over 90 young men represented for, for having a 3.0 GPA or higher uh, in the school division. And I think that's phenomenal uh, that we have so many young men who are performing very well academically in Newport News Public Schools. Um, the scholarship breakfast is an annual signature event that recognizes males from throughout the region. And I can honestly say Newport News is well represented at that breakfast. So not only congratulations to, our, to, our, um, to the 200 plus men for an excellent event, but also congratulations to our young men who were recognized at that event from all of our schools. So um, I'd also like to congratulate all of our teachers of the year. One of the dinners we had this, this, this uh, past month was our teacher of the year banquet. We held an annual banquet on May 2nd and we announced our division wide teacher of the year. Congratulations to, to Mr. Andy Perry, who is our division wide and middle school teacher of the year. Mr. Perry is a seventh grade science teacher at Crittenton Middle School. I had the fortune to, to visit his uh, uh, garden at, at Crittenton Middle. Uh, he was out there working with his students uh, on, on that day and uh, in, in that garden, and it's coming along very well. Uh, congratulations also to uh, Carla Bradley, a library media specialist at Discovery STEM Academy, our elementary school teacher of the year, and Kimberly Horton, an algebra teacher at Heritage High School, who was named the high school teacher of the year. We also recognized our support staff. That was another dinner at a banquet last week. Congratulations and thank you to all of the support staff who ensure that sm the smooth operations of our school division. We thank you uh, for all that you do every day for our students. And upcoming on Thursday, May 23rd, uh, we are hosting the annual retirement dinner. That will be coming up soon. I'm looking forward to celebrating with our honorees and recognizing all of their con contributions to Newport News Public Schools. Uh, upcoming as well, invite everyone to join us on Saturday, June 1st from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. For, for our STEM Community Day at the Freeman Center at Christopher Newport University. That's an upcoming event. Uh, please mark that down June 1st on a Saturday, 10 to 2 at Christopher Newport University. And families can enjoy hands-on um, hands and engaging activities, robotics, STEM demonstrations, student displays, and competitions. And attendees can also uh, explore STEM education op opportunities and professions as well. The event is sponsored uh, by the school district in cooperation with CNU. Bus transportation will be provided from locations throughout the city, and those uh, locations are located on our website. I also want to take an opportunity to remind everyone that Monday, May 27th is Memorial Day and all schools and offices will be closed. Um, and I'd also want to wish all of our graduating seniors best wishes. Graduation exercises will be held the second week of June. Uh, on Wednesday, Jan June 5th at 6 p.m., an Achievable Dream High School will conduct its commencement services at the Ferguson Center. On Saturday, why are you smiling over there, Maria? <laughs> on, sa <laughs> on Saturday, <laughs> she's smiling while I'm talking. On Saturday, June 8th, Warwick High School ceremonies will, will be held at 10, 10 a.m. Woodside's commencement <laughs> will be held at 2 p.m., followed by ceremonies for Denby High School at 6.30 at the Hampton Coliseum. 
Ceremonies for Heritage High School will be held on Saturday, June 9th at 2 p.m., followed by the commencement for Minchville um, High School at 6 p.m. at the Hampton Coliseum. So those, those include my remarks, Mr. Chairman. A lot of good things coming up. A lot of things, great things have passed. But uh, our student, I wish our stu all of our students continued success as they take their SOLs. Uh, we're looking for great results. And our AP testers as well, uh, best of luck to those students. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Dr. Parker. Uh, we'll move on to item number six, another time for the public to address the board. Are there any cards? There being none, we'll move on to uh, matters by the board. Uh, Ms. Jones, the floor is yours. Good evening. Um, you know, June 8th, 2 p.m. Can't come soon enough. Been looking forward to it <laughs> since January. <laughs> um, I would just like to start off my comments by highlighting the Kicking It to Violence kickball tournament that um, CWSCA held on Saturday. It was a success. Um, I was very proud of seeing it come from the, its beginning phases when we first started, I believe it was last year, um, to this year not only having teams compete from the schools, but also having community teams compete as well. We had the police department. It was just, it was amazing just seeing the community involvement pick up from where it was last year. And I'd like to thank all who came out um, and participated and played. Um, I would also like to go back a little bit to one of the comments made by uh, Mr. Lavette about school-based voter registration drives. I know because I have done a couple of them through other organizations and then um, my government teacher actually puts one on every year. There are actually quite a few that happen within the schools. Mm -hmm. However, they're very largely promoted and all the undertaking is done by individuals. I personally feel that it would be great if the school board, if Newport News Public Schools could maybe help, not necessarily the individuals, but the school district on a whole and have some sort of central voter registration drive to take some of that pressure off of the students then trying to talk to administrators to get their club or organization to host one, or the teachers having to find extra time in their busy schedules to try to host some in their classes and you know cram lessons in. Um, now I would also like to take my comments to a different tone than they normally do. I actually want to pull a quote from the April um, joint meeting that the board had with the city council. Um, now the she's referred to Councilwoman Scott and the he refers to Dr. Parker. And the quote is, she, Councilwoman Scott, understood his, Dr. Parker's role, was to do what was best for the schools and that the city council had to do what's best for the entire city. My question is, isn't what's best for the entire, for the schools, what's best for the entire city? The schools have the population that the city, that makes up the city. You don't have a city without the schools. Um, and I say that because while, you know, the matters of funding are done, everything is voted on, moving forward, you still have to look and consider that everything that happens in the schools is for the, the good of the city. You don't have the city if you don't have the schools. And so as the board continues discussions with city council and as city council and state legislators and federal legislators continue discussions about funding for education for various things, like for example, the Title II funds decreased um, in funding this year. There's no reasons funds should continue, de continue decreasing if legislators on all levels claim that they're as passionate about education as as they say they are. If that's true, then your funds will continue to increase. And as I've just been watching the debates go on um, on all levels, it's just been something that kind of, it really stirs me, really stirs me. Um, if you are going to put yourself in a position where you present people, then you need to make sure you're representing them accurately. So as years, <laughs> as, as um, council and as the board moves on with the upcoming years, just keep in mind that what you do for the school board um, is what you do for for the schools is what you're doing for the best of the city. There's no such thing as what's best for the school boards. For the schools is not what's best for the city. Um, with that being said, I am very glad um, to see everything that Newport News Public Schools is doing to support its students and its teachers. And um, that'll be it for my comments for tonight. So, yeah. <laughs> I guess we'll see who's going to be on the school board years <laughs> down the road. <laughs> My goal is the White House. <laughs> okay, White House. <laughs> well, we're going to continue. Um, um, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to start at a different end today. Uh, Ms. Simons. All right. Um, 
I'm also really looking forward to all of our graduations. My niece is graduating from Menchville High School, so I'm very excited about it. And I just continue to be so proud of our students. We had a really wonderful signing day for our New Horizons Academy of Advanced Technical Careers graduates. And what signing day involved is um, we at New Horizons kind of helped these students apply for jobs at New Newport News Shipbuilding and places like Pomoco Auto. And um, they got several job op offers. And then on signing day, they got to pick which employer they were gonna go work with. So it was really exciting. It was almost 90 students who went straight from high school right into um, really, really well-paid careers with um, Newport News Shipbuilding and some of our advanced um, manufacturing employers and, and welding. And, and so it was, it was just a really great day. I would encourage uh, any students who are interested in going right into a career to look at the Advanced Technical Careers Academy at New Horizons. And I also really enjoyed the support staff of the year banquet. I was moved by so many of our support staff totally immersing themselves in the school and the mission of helping students. There was a um, security guard who was doing restorative justice circles with kids who were you know having trouble at school there was a, a school administrator who was started her own club and was staying after school to to mentor uh other young people at school i just i i just you know teachers know that that they're going to be mentoring kids but you know everybody in the building really needs to work with students and i was just so proud of our, uh, our all of our administrators for just embracing that opportunity and lastly, I would like to announce I'm going to have a town hall, a school board town hall tomorrow, Wednesday, from 5.30 to 7 at Denby Community Center. And I'm going to present some information that I received at the Virginia School Board Association Conference on school safety. So I'm going to present some information on what we do in Virginia to keep our students safe at schools. And I'm also really pleased that um, the other Central District member, Lisa Searles Law, is going to join me. And she'll also present on some issues that she's learned about um, during, during this last year. So thank you very much. And I, I hope to see uh, anyone interested at Denby Community Center tomorrow at 5.30. Thank you, Ms. Simons. Uh, Mr. Ely. Thank you. Um, I also had the opportunity to attend the kickball game on Saturday at Todd Stadium. When I say that was the energy out there was amazing, it was amazing. Just to see the police department, the different schools, the children just competing against each other with all positive focus of, with curbing violence. It was really, it was really good. I want to say congratulations to Denby High School and Heritage High School. I kept joking with the Denby High School teacher saying, whoever win, you get the next day off, but the next day off was Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> so that was really, that was um, great. And big special thanks to our police department for partnering with us for such a great event. I also had the opportunity of being on the committee for Congressman Bobby Scott Congressional Art Contest. When I say the art from the students in our community that was produced, it was just phenomenal. And they said this is the most contestants they have seen since he's been doing it in the 25 years. So it was definitely um, amazing to see students express their energy through art. And I'm a big advocate for art. And some children deal with so much nowadays. You have social media, you just, it's coming from so many, so many different angles. And I'm a big, um, big advocate for letting children express their arts. So they definitely did that. Miss Lisa Daughter, one of, she did a drawing, I thought it was from a college student. It was just amazing. So our children are definitely doing very great jobs with the arts in the schools. Um, special thanks to all the teachers and staff. SOL testing, is it over? Still going. It's still going, but I, I, <laughs> I know y'all have definitely been working very hard to make sure 
our students are prepared to pass the SOLs. So special thanks to you. I also had the opportunity of visiting. I'm going to the Outer Ball this weekend at the Virginia Living Museum. They're definitely doing a great job over there. If you haven't had the chance to visit the new shark exhibit they have at the Living Museum, it is nice. I actually got to touch a shark. You know, I was kind of scared at first, but <laughs> it didn't bite. It just, just laid there. So <laughs> <laughs> the shark exhibit at the Virginia Living Museum is very something that you might want to take your family in, out and see. And I definitely love the partnership that the Virginia Living Museum and the school system does have. And the last thing, Huntington. We definitely want a Huntington Middle School. But to be quite honest, the ball is out of our hand. The funding for Huntington Middle School comes from the city. If we could build a Huntington Middle School tomorrow, I'm sure everybody on this board would pass, do the, hit it down, let's build a school. We don't have the funding. All we can do is continue to go to city council and beg them, sir, please, sir, can we have the money to build a school in our community? And I appreciate the Huntington alumni for all that you are doing to make sure this happened because we can't do it alone. We can't do it alone as school board members. It's going to take community efforts to make sure we get the school built. I mean, we tried with the budget. <laughs> All we could do is continue to try, continue to fight, but it's definitely going to be a, um, it's going to have to be something that the city want to do and invest in our community. We, we just got a 30 million cent, what is the, um, the hood grant. There's great things happening in the East End. We definitely need a school and we definitely need to support other communities to continue to push city council to let them know we're stakeholders in the city. We want a school, you're gonna build our school. It's not up to you, it's not about what you want, it's about what the citizens want. And I'm gonna be honest with you, when it, when it was brought to me, when I first got on the board, I said, okay, I don't know if we should build it or not. But it wasn't about what John want. John, this being elected is about working for the people. And I think if our city council members, not all of them, if some of them would know that you represent the community and not represent yourself, we can get further in a lot of things with the city and especially Huntington Middle School. So I definitely appreciate all you do and hopefully y'all will continue to fight. And I know I will continue to fight and I can speak for the rest of our board members. They will continue to fight to make sure we have a school built in Huntington Middle School and not just say you're gonna build it, give us a date when you're gonna build it. You can say you could build it, but that could be 2030, 2040. We need to, we need to know now, when do you plan on building Hunter Middle School? So I want to again thank you for all y'all do, and we're going to continue to fight for you in the community. Thank you, Mr. Ely. Ms. Cheryl Sloss. Um, this time of the year is really uh, a lot of energy. There's a lot of energy doing things um, for the school to wrap up uh, exams, uh, students finishing final projects, and our heroes really are our teachers. Um, so thank you, uh, continue to hang in there, uh, reach out to those students to push them that extra mile. I know that they lose steam at the end just like we do and we have to model for them what that looks like to keep going. So I, I charge you to, to do that and to do that well. Um, I got the opportunity to go to uh, Heritage's uh, STEAM or STEM day. The students got to present um, their projects. Uh, it was just exciting to see what influences them and where they're headed and how much they, we think they aren't listening, but they really are and how much they realize that what's been put in front of them has been for their benefit. And just to see those presentations of how they've pulled it all together uh, here at the end is really exciting. Um, I guess the only other thing to comment for me is on the budget process. Uh, this is my first year on the board. I, I would say that it was an eye opener, um, but the cohesiveness that this board um, spoke with was uh, just remarkable. Um, we're elected officials just as um, the city council is, so we're, we have a charge to do and uh, just as they do and so we are not downtrodden we're going to figure this out 
we're going to meet with them, we're going to do what it takes so that we don't have a repeat of this time next year. Um, I am so honored to work with this group. They are a passionate group and they believe in what we have been elected to do. Thank you, Ms. Cheryl Sloss. Uh, Mr. Harris. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, I would like to uh, thank you, um, my fellow school board members, uh, Dr. Parker, his staff, uh, teachers, and every and other stakeholders in the community uh, that came out to support the uh, budget. Um, I can honestly say I'm a little bit, I am disappointed, uh, not in our efforts, um, but uh, in uh, the city's effort. Uh, I think the young lady here pretty much summed it up best. Um, I'm still confused about it. They say if you're trying to make sense of something that <laughs> probably has no sense to be made of, then you either move on, accept it, or whatever the case may be. Uh, but this charge is not to them. They've made their decision. Uh, this charge is to uh, the people that sit to my left and the people that sit to my right. Uh, I have no doubt that we are a co cohesive team, uh, but I also know that our message and the delivery of that message has to match the uh, outcome of this last decision. Uh, we cannot approach this thing the same way we have approached it. Uh, I use the analogy of I feel as though I'm 0-2, and, and I, you know, I have one more, one more swing at this thing. Uh, the bottom line is we as a board, like I said a couple months ago, uh, have to get honest with ourselves. We have to sit down and discuss on what type of voice we want to bring forward. Uh, also, all options uh, should be brought to us on the table. Uh, and, and even in the Code of Virginia, it clearly states, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, Title 22-1 Education, Chapter 8, Public Schools, Article 4, Town Schools and Divisions, that the bottom line is, is that pro-rate share of town shall be determined by allocating the town to the same percentage of general or unit levy receipts appropriated by the county government. Uh, basically, uh, pretty much share funding, uh, what you talked about, Dr. Parker. So, you know, we have the, uh, the, the, the state constitution, we have the uh, state articles on our side so it is up to us as a board on how we want to send that message to them uh, and sometimes you have to draw a line in the sand I mean they have already shown us uh, the support they have for the school division uh, so I, I just don't want to continue down the, the same conversation of uh, uh, yeah we can meet we can meet sure we can do that but at the same time I want to know what we are prepared to do as a board, if we hit uh, crossroads X and it doesn't happen, all right, I'm willing to live with any decision that we make. I'm willing to support the board in any way uh, I can, uh, but um, uh, I, didn't I don't like the outcome of that. And uh, personally, I don't, I don't see it uh, changing. Um, and so if they don't change, then we are going to have to change. Uh, so. <laughs> and uh, I thank everybody again for supporting the, this uh, board, uh, supporting the decisions that was made. Uh, I would like to see more parents participate uh, in driving this home. Um, uh, maybe there's maybe some groups and organizations out there that can uh, help us uh, actually uh, drill down to those those parents and, and educate them and, and let them know that you know. You know, we need their voice as well. And I think once that happens, I think people tend to change their mind once they, once they see that local support uh, move in another direction. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Harris. Uh, Dr. Bess. Um, good evening, everyone. As I was trying to characterize um, my remarks since the last school board meeting, the word celebrations came to mind. But, um, I kind of changed that to the beginning of celebration. I, I too have had an opportunity to attend several um, affairs where we celebrated Teacher of the Year, Support Staff of the Year. I've attended uh, programs for students, uh, Salute to Success, uh, I Too Can Dream, 
HR CAP honored a couple of our students. Um, the New Horizons signing day was simply um, amazing and the 200 men um, scholars program. So we're beginning to celebrate as we get to the end of the school year. As far as Huntington Middle School, Huntington Middle School is concerned, it's tied in with the budget, which several of you have commented on tonight. And at this point, um, as Mr. Ely has said, our hands are kind of tied. Um, when I was a student, government was one of my favorite um, subjects. I, I didn't envision myself sitting on the school board, but, but here I am. I was a student when um, Huntington was Huntington High School was closed, um, and now I'm a board member with some, some voice in the fate of Huntington Middle School being rebuilt in the community. And in my wildest dreams did, did I ever phantom that we would be waiting on information from a city attorney. We have to really go into what the law says as far as funding um, schools. I, I just never imagined we would be um, at this point. But with that being said, I commit myself 100 percent. Um, I will give everything in my powers and my efforts and in, in, in my ability um, to push forward for a new um, Huntington. And I'm going to close and say that this is the happiest time of the school year um, as, because we're getting to the end of the school year for many, for students, for staff, for parents. But also it's one of the hardest times um, of the school year. It's very difficult when kids come back after the Memorial Day holiday. It's very difficult. Teachers, they have pretty much given all that they have and they're running on steam. Uh, parents are getting a little antsy because they don't know. Some of them still don't have plans um, for the summer. But at the heart of it all is our students. And for some of our students, even though I commend Newport News Public Schools and I'm proud to be a part of it because we have programs such as SPARK and the STEP program, but for some of our students, it's a hard time because it's a scary time because school is the, the one constant for them. That's the thing that's always gonna be there. They have teachers that love them. They have meals. They have certain times that they do things. But as we get to the end of the school year, for, for some of our students, it's very, very difficult. Um, I know I'm kind of preaching to the choir in this room, but for those of you out there on, on television, you know, keep that in mind when we think about our students um, you know, for the summer as they take this break and just embrace them and support the things that the school division and that the city and that parents and communities are trying to do so that students can have a safe, they can have a pleasant, and, and they can have a successful in a, a, a summer. So that's all I'd like to say. Thank you, Dr. Best. Vice Chair Brown. All right. <clears throat> well, thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the board. I want to thank the board, uh, first and foremost, uh, this evening uh, for your offer of support uh, as I pursue the Office of uh, Regional Chairman. And I uh, pledge to uh, try to represent our division and our region uh, in the best way uh, possible. Uh, there will be an election. So y'all need to show up to the VSBA annual conference and, and vote for me. <laughs> um, uh, with that, uh, this is, you know, as was mentioned, this is one of the happiest times of the year. I, one of the times of the year I look forward to the most, I, I love graduation weekend. Uh, this is the weekend that reminds me of, as a board member, why we do what we do. Um, when you get a chance, uh, those of you members of the public, uh, it, it's an honor and privilege to be able to sit there on stage and um, you see the Hampton Roads Convention Center filled to capacity. And for people who want to say that um, the, the, the public or people don't value or care about education, just come to one of our graduations and listen to the people screaming and, and cheering their, their heads off um, like they just won the lottery because they did. That's what education does for people and you will know how much people do value education. So don't, don't believe you know, what you hear uh, from other folks when they, when they talk about people don't value education because when you see those um, young people walk across the stage and receive their diploma, you know how much people value education because you'll hear it uh, if you come to any of our graduations. Um, with that being said, I wanted to make a couple comments about the budget, um, uh, say some, something, reiterate some things that have, that have been said. Uh, but I, I, as always, I, I, I throw my numbers in there. There's a couple numbers that I hope the public will continue to pay attention to. So I've been calling this out uh, at every uh, board meeting for the last few months, and I'm still going to put out the rhetorical question of $2.8 million was approved in the capital budget for a design of Huntington Middle School. Has $2.8 million been appropriated to the Newport News Public School Division for the design of Huntington Middle School, even though it was voted on and approved by City Council? Have we received it yet? And I believe the answer to that question is still no, almost more than a year ago. Okay, so tonight we voted as we, I believe we did not have any other recourse because we went and asked for an additional $2.4 million in our operating budget, but that, that uh, 
that offer was denied. And instead, it was another, we promise, we'll give you $2.4 million in capital, which is, you know, that's, that's nice because our, our buildings and our capital is in, in great need, but we were talking about the operating budget. So we were talking about the operating budget. We asked for $2.4 million in the operating budget, and what, we, what was turned around, no, you can have $2.4 million in capital. By the way, there was $2.8 million we still haven't given you. So now if you add those up, well, I, you know, I do math, five point, that's $5.2 million. So I hope the public is paying attention to $5.2 million. Let's see if we get it. Because $2.8 million of it, we still don't have it. Now we get to the capital side, because that's what we're getting ready to do in the fall. We're going to have to, there's, there's two budget cycles. I want everyone to hopefully pay attention to that and understand that. So we are just got through talking about our operating budget. And now we're going to have to get ready to talk about our capital budget, and that's where Huntington Middle School and a lot of the other school to, schools in our division who are in desperate need of funding, uh, where we're going to need that funding. Well, our percentage of the budget is even lower on the capital side than it is on the operating budget side, meaning the share of, of revenue, the share of funding that the city spends, the percentage is even lower on the capital side. But I'm not, maybe, it's, maybe it's not lower this year, because this year is, I've got down the lowest I've ever seen it. We're down at 22% by my count. If you count the uh, uh, general fund plus waterworks revenue, we're down at 22%. So maybe, maybe it's a little bit higher. Maybe it's about the same. But it's worse on the capital side. Okay? So in either way, we have to start talking about the conversation. The community, the public needs to start thinking about we need to be a larger share. We need to be an equal partner or a larger share of the budget either way. We have more employees than the city does. But the majority of the money the city spends on itself. We have more land than the city does. About 70% of all the land in the city, all the municipal land in the city, belongs to the school division. We get less than a third of the revenue to maintain 70% of all the square footage and buildings in the city. We have, you know, roughly on the other side with the operating side, 70% something like that of the employees in the city are with school division, less than a third of the budget. So those, those two equations, they don't balance out. Eventually, something's got to give, and that's where we, we are. Uh, I hope the public understands that it is a, is a crisis in terms of you cannot continue in that manner. And what is best for the schools, I will say, I'll agree, what's best for the schools is what's best for the city. There is a return on investment. Dr. Parker mentioned it when he had his, uh, his state of the schools uh, address. There are several studies that do um, show it's about anywhere from $1.30 to $1.50 for every dollar spent on schools. So you spend a dollar, you put a you dollar into schools, a dollar thirty, dollar fifty, come, 150 percent return comes back into the local economy and boosts our entire economy. Helps all of us, helps uh, all our salaries, helps all of, uh, of us in this community to live and work in a better place. Okay, I'm not sure you get that kind of return on investment for parking garages. <laughs> but, you know, um, so. That's just, I hope that uh, everyone in the, in the community continues to pay attention to this and, and monitor this, because we're getting ready. We've got to go to the capital side, which is even harder. So in the capital side, maybe what's going to happen is we won't get any increased funding in the capital, but we'll get a promise for some more funding in the operating budget. Maybe we'll get the, we'll the $2.4 million in the operating budget when we get to the capital budget. But in, in all seriousness, we, we, do, it, we do need to uh, turn this around. We do need to get that larger share, because we do have some schools I mentioned tonight, Aviation Academy. You know, we've talked about Warwick High School. We've talked about Sedgefield. We've got a lot of schools that are in the same, mm -hmm. that same decision point, that same tipping point that Huntington was in, where it's, hmm, can't keep going like this. And the way that the, the law works right now, the only place, so, so, so everybody hears it, the only place that we can get funding for construction of our schools is really the city. That's it. Grants and things like that, you can, get a little, you can get a little bit here and there, but the only real place that we can get funding for our schools is from the city. It has to come from the locality. That's the way that the laws and everything has been set up by the General Assembly and everybody else. That's how, it's, that's how it goes. So the funding has to come locally. It's not going to come from anywhere else. So when, as you talk to other folks and you talk to your representative, that's where it's going to come from. So don't accept any other answer when they say, well, what, what about this or what about this other plan? No, it's going to come from the locality. It comes from the city. That's it. There, there is no if, ands, or buts about it. So I just want everyone, hopefully, to be very clear about that. And, you know, you, uh, go ahead. I threw out numbers. Go ahead and, you know, hit me back. Tell me, tell me if I'm wrong or whatever. I'll, I'll be happy to come back up here and, and tell you if I made any, any mistakes in my numbers. Go ahead and challenge me. But I'm, I think I'm pretty clear here on the money has to come from the city. We're not getting enough of it. 
we need to get to a revenue sharing model. That's the solution here. Other localities have done it very successfully. Virginia Beach, Norfolk, you know, Hampton has a revenue sharing model. We can do revenue sharing, and it's, it, works, it works great. It works great for lots of localities. And I'm going to throw out a number, 33. I think we need to be 33 percent, a third of the budget, <laughs> consistently every year, 33 percent of the revenue coming into the city ought to come to us. I think that's, I think that's, uh, I think that's less than fair because really I think it ought to be half. So, I, so I started out my, my, my position on the compromise at 33 percent, okay? And that's my number, Mr. Chairman, and I'll yield the floor to you. <laughs> okay, Mr. Chair, can you say one more? Uh, yeah, yes, I, I'm I can sorry. I forgot something very important. <laughs> I too, I'm a, I'm a proud parent. I have a student that's graduating um, from Achievable Dream uh -huh. on June the 5th. So, and she also has perfect attendance for 12 years, but I'm very, very proud of her, very proud that she's a product of such a fantastic um, public school system. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Well, well, I guess it's me and to your bed. Um, there's, there's, there's great things that are happening in Newport News uh, public schools. I'm going to start this evening by saying uh, I have two daughters who graduated on Mother's Day weekend uh, from two uh, different universities, and, and they were, again, educated here at, at, the, at Newport News Public Schools. So we are uh, doing great things with our students. And congratulations to Dr. Best, to your daughter, on her graduation in the coming month. Um, I'm going to start by saying first uh, congratulations to a couple of groups. Uh, the students who were recognized at the salute to the sex banquet, um, congratulations to them. Not only were those students recognized for academic achievement uh, for books and things, but many of those were recognized for accomplishment in obtaining multiple certifications in uh, particular disciplines, uh, plumbing, HVAC, software applications. Uh, some of these students are equipped to graduate from school and then go directly into a good paying job. So this is an outstanding accomplishment. And to continue on that good news, what Ms. Simon was saying, uh, many of those students were awarded jobs or they were offered acceptance into apprenticeships or into um, different trades programs here uh, in the Newport News and their surrounding uh, city. So congratulations to those students. Uh, to our Teachers of the Year awardees and to our support staff year honorees, congratulations on a job well done. You earned it, so you deserve it. And congratulations is good too. It's a lot of chicken dinners, uh, but um, <laughs> it, it, we care about all folks here in Newport News, not just the teachers, but the support staff, some of the folks who never get um, notice. We also had a, a dinner for those who are 25, 30, 40 years of service here. And again, on Thursday, we'll be back eating dinner again uh, for those who are retiring. <laughs> so uh, congratulations to those folks uh, who will be retiring um, coming into the school year. To a few other individuals and organizations, I wanted to say uh, who came to bat for Newport News Public Schools in the support of uh, the school budget uh, that was proposed to the city council. Uh, I want to thank you for your belief and your commitment to our students and to our teachers and to our staff personnel, and in particular to uh, public education. Uh, your passion was heartfelt. Uh, it was not angered at the city council, it was just passion, as one had stated. A special thanks uh, to Newport News Teachers Association, the Newport News PTA, the Newport News Education Foundation, the NAACP, and to Delegate David Yancey for writing letters to our city council in support of that budget that was presented to them. And so that's all types of folks. We would like to say thank you, thank you, and thank you again. Our, at this time, I do would like to thank the city council for approving the required funds to meet the needs of the school system for this coming year. So no consolation. We did get a budget funded. It's a short-term fix, just a short-term fix. And um, we need to uh, look for a long-term solution in order to address 
the funding needs of our school system, operating and to CIP. Um, I know this board and Dr. Parker and this staff, I know we're eager to start the meetings with the city council, you know. Uh, we're gonna come to that meeting with open ears, with open ideas, with open discussion. There must be honest dialogue between the two groups. We must begin to work together and respect one another for the betterment of our children and the citizens here in Newport News. I would say congratulations again to the city of Newport News and the Newport News Redevelopment Housing Authority for being selected as the winner of the Choice Neighborhood Initiative Grant, where they were awarded $30 million for the Ridley Marshall Project. I hope that these funds will help to lessen the financial burden on the city and that they could find it more favorable to build that new educational facility, the Huntington Steam Academy, the Huntington uh, Votech School, the Huntington Middle School, and the South District for our students. So part of that money uh, was for the school system, uh, thanks to Dr. Parker and his team, uh, though not mentioned in the paper, the school system played a, we put, we played a large percentage of getting that grant as well. Uh, we had to get the numbers, we had to identify all the kids in that one mile radius, where made it, right? And then during that talk with this, during the CNI presentation, the question came up about Huntington. The CNI, they asked, where's the money for Huntington? And Dr. Parker uh, kindly turned it over to a city manager. <laughs> and the city manager assured HUD, well, we got that $30 million, that the funds were approved for the study and that we were working on an agreement to build that school. So I hope that in, of course, that $30 million still doesn't come with strings attached. And I hope uh, that they're listening to um, this board tonight. And I hope that they've listened to some of the city council meetings that the Huntington is not left out in that equation of, because all of this money, $30 million really Many of us, that's past our times. That $30 million to see the fruition of that, it's about 10 years away to really see that project. You know, five, 10 years away till you really see it. That's for those kids who right now are in middle school. That's who the CNI is for. The betterment of this city, the economic prowess, the economic fortitude vision is for the students that are currently really in elementary school. Mm -hmm really in elementary school. So when we think about that $30 million and think about economics, and I heard that today, there's a movie I watched called, I think, The Darkest Minds, where they grounded up all the kids that were smart, and they had this intelligence, some could move stuff, some could spit fire, some could read their minds. Well, when they rounded up all the kids in the city, guess what? Everyone moved out of that city because there was no jobs, no economy. No children, no economy. No children, no economy. So the economy really starts, again, that's the investments. I'll say it again. No need to stand before a paying teller when no deposits have been made. Children and education is an investment. You must invest in our kids. And that's all we're talking about. We're in a, I'm not shaming, don't want to shame any city council folk or things like, we're just passionate. We're just passionate about you know, our, our students in our city. If you're passionate about the city and education, then you're passionate about our city. So again, uh, last but not least, I want to congratulate the seniors, again, who will be graduating uh, in, in two weeks. And uh, I look forward to seeing them at the graduations. Mm -hmm. And that being said, um, there's no other comments. I will adjourn this meeting. Okay, here we go. All right.